food, fuel and fibre requirements of our rapidly expanding population are one of the major challenges that face society today. By 2050, agricultural production is estimated to need to increase by 70% globally and by 100% in developing countries. Now, if we are to meet this demand, crop productivity will also have to increase in a sustainable way. And by sustainable, I mean environmentally, socially and economically sustainable. And this is all in the light of global climate change, as well as loss of land due to urbanisation and soil degradation. Since 2050, agricultural improvements have meant that we have been able to feed our rapidly expanding population. But worryingly, we are seeing these yield increases starting to reach a plateau for some of our key crops around the globe. And therefore, we need to look to new strategies to address this challenge. And I believe that photosynthesis could offer a solution, as despite being one of the most important processes that is taking place on this planet, it is surprisingly inefficient, with the conversion of light energy into stored biomass within the plant only being of the order of 1% to 2% efficient. Now, one of the main culprits of this inefficiency is this enzyme Rubisco, which is involved in the capture of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Now, Rubisco is slow. Typical enzymes can catalyse thousands of molecules per second, but Rubisco only of the order of three. It also suffers from a lack of specificity, so it can catalyse the reaction that we want with carbon dioxide, but also a competing reaction with oxygen, which causes a loss to the plant. Now, I am fascinated by this enzyme, and in particular, how we might go about improving upon its slow and promiscuous behaviour because any improvements that we might make would lead to significant impact on crop yield. One approach might be to try to increase the local concentration of carbon dioxide around Rubisco in the plant. And indeed, some plants, such as maize, have evolved mechanisms that can do just that. But unfortunately, these are not found in key grain crops, such as rice and wheat. Although scientists are trying to genetically engineer these mechanisms into these less efficient crops. Now, I think that this genetic approach is really exciting and indeed it has the potential to impact upon crop yields. But it's incredibly challenging because photosynthesis is such a complex process. If you consider the analogy of a roadblock in a busy city, an experienced driver might be able to take side streets to avoid this roadblock. And in much the same way, plants often try to avoid the changes that the scientists are trying to engineer within them. Or more commonly, they're simply lethal and the plant dies. Now, my group and I at Imperial College London are taking an alternative approach, but still being guided by nature. There are a suite of enzymes that are involved in the capture and release of carbon dioxide, and we're synthesising some molecules that can mimic this behaviour with the hope that they can be sprayed on crops much in the same way as a fertiliser and will be taken up by the plant and will increase the concentration of carbon dioxide around Rubisco inside the plant and increase its activity and photosynthetic yields. Now, we have already synthesised this suite of molecules and have shown that they can capture and release carbon dioxide and we're testing their effect on Rubisco that's been extracted from plants and seeing really, really exciting results. One of the challenges, though, that remains will be how we can get these molecules to cross the multiple cell boundaries that lie between the molecule and, of course, Rubisco inside the plant. Now, this is a common challenge that's faced by the agrochemical industry and one that I do believe will be tractable. However, success will require multidisciplinary approaches. We will need to bring together agri-scientists with physics, physicists with chemists, with engineers and mathematicians to work together to tackle this problem. And indeed, I'm working with a group at Imperial College to help us to understand how molecules can cross these cell boundaries. Now, the good news is that if we can increase the local concentration of carbon dioxide around Rubisco, we know that the plant won't try to avoid this roadblock, as experiments have shown that plants, when grown in elevated carbon dioxide levels, show increased rates of photosynthesis and increased crop yields. Food security affects all of us. 
And I lead a network called Agrinet, which aims to bring together um, academics, industry partners, and users such as farmers and policymakers to work together to try to tackle this shared challenge. And I believe that the research that I've spoken about today and this network approach to working could make a real impact on the world. Thank you. Thank you.